share this the screen so i'm recording now I don't see the sharing. I'm sharing. See that? No chat. No, we are going to share now. Um, Because before I could make it. Um, Dominic, can you share the slides? I could share. Okay. At least I can try. Does it work? Yes, it works. You want it bigger? Yes, uh, presentation mode. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us in this uh, road track meeting. Uh, this page, well, this uh, meeting flows through the note well, so be aware of that. You don't want to read it, but should be aware of the note well. Okay, next slide. Yep. I should have actually uploaded the document and you could, everybody could have scored for it. But anyway, go ahead. Uh, next slide. And manage. Yeah. Okay, this is the meeting material. Please uh, add your name into the etherpad. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this is the agenda for today. We are going to basically through, through the status of the documents that we have in the working group. And there is a comment about the agenda. The capabilities and opens are going to be presented by Raul. And this modification by Georges and a light in view of the information by Pascal. Next slide, please. Okay, this is our milestones. Um, we have Four miles done that is the IST. And still, we have to work on some other documents that we're going to mention. Okay. Next, next slide, please. Okay, about LDV Ripple, uh, the authors uh, submit the version 8 addressing the open tickets 194, about the introduction 195, 196. Uh, 187, 198 uh, needs uh, as well if the document was about to be standard or experimental, the auto to be standard. Ticket 196 about replacing 6997, they delayed the normative reference to that RC. Um, but uh, uh, Alvaro gave some new comments over those uh, tickets and then. We close those tickets and we open new ones, ticket 199 and ticket 200. So the action point with this document is the comments to be addressed by the authors that Alvaro made for them. Next slide, please. Okay, and our leave. Um, uh, there is a several change here in version 17. Uh, the, in the, there was a the F flag in the target option. Um, there were deleting as well the anonymous EDAR. Uh, 
um, as well uh, for Stavac uh, be uh, as a rule. So, well, the CISLR know what this uh, can uh, get a positive answer from the rule. Um, Pascal, do you want to add something here? <clears throat> yes, actually, so the latest is, is 18. Um, I introduced a typo uh, in the formatting, so, so the uh, YANA section is actually split by mistake, but it's just formatting. But uh, yes, otherwise, the bottom line was the, the version, I guess, 16 is the one that was uh, sent to the uh, as for publication. But uh, since we had this review by Raoul and we raised interesting uh, problems, uh, we ended up with this uh, huge simplification because th there was some leftover text which induced some possibilities which were actually not there anymore uh, due to the fact that we are using non storing mode for a rule in, in any fashion. So this allowed those simplifications, like remove the anonymous CDAR flow, which was always a pain in the neck since the beginning. So I'm happy that the ISG will never have to review that piece. It's just, I just erased it. And so uh, it's it's much nicer now. We basically force the, the DAO hack and we force the use of the uh, extended uh, DAO option. And with, with this, we limit the cases and the flows and make things a lot simpler. Yeah, and you add an F flag to indicate a full address. All the prefix the full address, the target option. You add yes, the, the, that's that's a, an additional optimization that Raoul asked for, and it makes a lot of sense. We use it in mobile IP, so it's not no news. Uh, so we just emulated here what we do in mobile IP, and it appears to be useful. So it's a side effect, I would say. Mm -hmm. so the new DAO option will have that additional benefit. Um, in terms of, of protocol, we just removed cases, so we just simplified, we, we basically pruned the tree of possibilities. Yeah, and I So I guess what worked before still works, it's just that complex cases are gone. And as well as consequence, you have the NPDL, since you extend to non-story modes. Actually, the NPDAO was already modified, just that the text was missing to say that we did. So uh, part uh, as well of uh, the whole uh, review was to, to find that uh, the way we used the NPDAO was not consistent with the NPDAO draft, which was limited to one case. So we had to extend the, so we don't change it, but we extend its applicability to other flows, which is actually the expectation for the six flow drafts as well. So now the whole thing is consistent. It was fair to say that we actually extended the NPDAO draft for that. So we added text. But then again, we don't change the protocol or its activity. We just, here we, we actually say that something that we did, right? We make it, we clarify that we effectively do that. And uh, as well, you are, uh, well, just the rename of the fixing uh, address registration option flag from arrow status to bit number, you rename the first column. Ines, it's very hard for me to pass your words. It's breaking up. Oh, sorry. Um, as well, in the IANA, you add modifications like rename of the first column of the table from ARO status to bit number. That, that's a pure editorial. Yeah, uh, there was a, an editorial mistake on the name of one field uh -huh. in one IANA section, so I added that. Then again, it's not changing functionally yeah. anything yeah. in the draft, it's just cleaning up yeah. basically yeah. stuff. So the actual point here would be like uh, we ask the community to tell you one comments. And we will kind of open it for like two weeks and then we will send the email to Alvaro to say that. If you guys like, I can fix the INS section. If I get review commands, I will, I will fix everything together. I understand that the button asking for publication was already pressed. Yes, yes, but it's in the queue of Alvaro. Yes, exactly. So I just don't want to delay that document within that queue mm -hmm. because we didn't add any function. We just cleaned up the one that existed. Yeah. So, so I just don't want to lose, you know, th those queues are kind of slow these days. So I don't want to lose the position in the queue, whatever it is. No, I mean, I think you, we don't lose the position. We just uh, uh, request for comment. Since Alvaro is online, maybe you can comment on that. 
Um, yeah, can you hear me? Hey, how are you? Um, so yeah, you just lost the place in the queue. You're, you're going last now. <laughs> no, uh, so uh, yeah, so I'm still a couple of documents away from getting to this one. Um, so yeah, don't worry about it. Um, as long as there's not a lot of changes um, and uh, you're done by the time I get there, which might be a week or two, then I think we should be okay. Yeah, I mean, if there is any more change, it's it's if somebody comes in with a review between now and then, right? So you're basically telling us two weeks from now the, the doc needs to be frozen. So that that's I mean reinforcing the call that Ines just made to the community. Like, yep. uh, if you want a last chance to do any review or change anything in that text, now is the right time to say. Yeah. Published 19, as I said, there is this this typo anyway in the structure of the INS section. Thank you very much, Pascal. And Alvaro. Next slide. Um, Raul, next slide. Dominic, please. I'm typing at the same time. Okay. Now, Raul, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, can I hope everyone can hear me okay? Uh, okay. I'm good. So uh, there has been one major change uh, for in the RPL extended control option that was added in the last version of the draft. Uh, basically, one one major thing that I missed out was uh, uh, the option type had a. I assumed that the option type had a secure bit on, and hence I placed the extended bit in the second MSP as uh, you know. So so uh, where during Dominic's uh, review, he 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 mentioned why why was it necessary to put it. In Second MSB. That's when I realized that you know, a secure bit is not needed for option type. Uh, so now the extended bit is moved to the first MSB position. Uh, so uh, so th uh, that that is only the movement of the movement of the bit location. Uh, one more important point that was discussed on the mailing list in the last couple of uh, uh, days was. When we set this X bit, essentially what we're doing is we are reserving the number of RPL extended control options. So we have, uh, if, if the option type is 256, by using the X bit, what we are saying is that we can have maximum 128 normal control options and 128 RPL extended control options. Uh, one of the things that Dominic mentioned was, is if, if we are going to do our extended control options and in the future if we see that most of the time extended control options are going to be made use of then why can't we set two bits in place of one in which case uh, the range could be extended from 0 uh, 0 x 8 0 to uh, 0 x uh, 4 0 uh, so so basically what it would mean is 64 uh, 64 option con control options for regular options and 192 control option for the extended ones uh, one so, so that time I thought maybe that might not be needed, but uh, after some time, you know, well, it realized I, I realized that it is possible for a extended control option to work as a regular option, but not vice versa. So it may not be a bad idea to actually say set a bigger range for extended control option. Uh, right now, the draft is what you can see in the picture, but anyone has a specific opinion there about setting one or one bit or two bit for uh, uh, extended control options, uh, uh, let, let us know. Uh, Dominic, I, I hope that the, the, I've got what uh, we discussed on the mailing list clear here. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so, so basically now I think maybe it is better to use the range 0x40 to 0xff for extended control options, given that any extended control option can still serve as a regular option, uh, albeit with an uh, extra byte, but still it works as a regular option, which is not possible otherwise. You know, uh, a regular option cannot work as an extended option naturally. Right. Uh, so next slide, please. So that's that's that about uh, Mopex uh, draft. The next 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 updates are about capabilities, and we have a major updates here. So uh, we have been discussing about capabilities queries and response for all the time. So the the, the latest draft update had added this feature. Basically, we now have a new new message which can query capabilities and uh, get a response. So uh, 
basically the, there were three things i kept in mind basically a node should be able to query the list of supported capabilities and a node should be able to query specific capability details so these are two different things and a set of capabilities to respond may exceed mtu so if if, if you are if you are querying for all the capabilities it is there is a good chance that a single a cap, uh, all the capability list the the set of capabilities cannot may not uh, you know, f fit in the in a single MTU, so it might have to be distributed over, uh, uh, transmitted over multiple messages. So these are the three things I kept in mind. Uh, yeah, next slide, please. Arun? Yeah. Can I interrupt? Um, if we if we start doing this, that that's a question I had for the uh, other draft. Uh, when we we want to send something in multiple message, we mm -hmm. we don't have. In Ripple, the capability to say one of three, two of three, three of three. Right, yeah. We don't know when we receive something in multiple message if we got all the messages. So I yeah, can so... that in, the, in the, the other draft, but it's, I was not very happy with that. I was wondering if um, we could think about you know, having that kind of, of signaling in this draft for, for the responses we send like in the generic format. Uh, find a few bits to say which is the number of this and a few bits to say what's the total number. Right. So, Pascal, this is the major point which uh, which I had to think about more in detail. You know, this this uh, apart from this, basically everything was much simpler to handle. Uh, so, there is a handling that I've added for this particular aspect, how to make sure that uh, uh, if, if the capability set has been sent through three messages and one of the message gets lost on the receiver, how would the receiver know whether the second message or third message is lost? So, so this is something that I had in my mind when, uh, when, when designing this message request response. Uh, I don't have exactly the same format that you mentioned as to say using some specific bits. Uh, uh, let me go to the next slide and see. Let's let's see. If, uh, I'm not saying it's the right solution. I'm I'm good. I'm happy that that she, I, I want to make sure this discussion is triggered between the group. Okay. Just to let you know, it's related to your question on my draft, which is mm -hmm. uh, it's overly complex. And part of the other city mm. is to be able to summarize the options that didn't change, so you don't have to change those to send those in in full, and you just change mm. the one that changed. You see what I mean? So that's no, really no, no. It's all this mechanic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 it normally fits things in one message. But okay, go, go, go ahead. Sorry for the interrupt. Oh, I'm so, uh, so, so, uh, I, so the other draft, the eliding info draft, basically talks about making sure that the version. Uh, so. Uh, you're, you're talking about the version, right? I mean, that information is not a problem here. I mean, that I'm assuming we we, we don't we don't maintain a. Oh, we'll come back to it. I don't want to interrupt your flow. Okay, all right. Okay. To derive the people. Uh, so this is the uh, so a set of new messages have been added. One is the cap Q message, which is the query message. I'm calling it. Uh, it basically is is it it is very similar to down message. It has a cap a capability uh, query sequence number, and then there are a set of options. There is one new control option that has been added, which uh, which is which is uh, which which is capability type list. So basically, what a node who is querying the remote node, what it can do is it can specifically say that I'm querying you for capability type 1, type 2, or type 3. So now one twist here is, if this capability type list option is not sent as part of this query, then the responder will essentially send back this list saying that I support capability type 1, capability type 2, and capability type 3. Uh, so, so, so this is this is uh, this is one of the one of the things that you know one has to keep in mind during. Uh, so, so if this if there are no, if this if this control option is not present in the capability queue, it means that the 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 sender is querying the list of capabilities. If the capability query already contains this type list with the corresponding capability types, then it essentially means it is querying for those specific uh, capabilities. Next slide, please. So the capability S uh, or the capability response uh, is is sent in in response to the capability query. The capability query sequence number is simply quite copied from the capq message. Uh, the options here can be two type two things. You know, uh, 
One, one is the set, the capability type list that was uh, mentioned before. The second is the specific capabilities which are being queried by the responder, uh, by, by the querier. So the responder will send, I, I, I support capability type one, type two, and the, with, the, with the complete information of those capabilities and send and optionally send a capability type list. Now there is a specific reason why the capability type list might be sent to the uh, sent by the capability responder to the capability query. Uh, so so the, basically what I'm trying to say is this options will contain two types of control options. One is the capability type list, which was discussed at the previous slide, and the other is set of capabilities, actual capabilities with it, with its information. Uh, next slide, please. So now I'll give you some examples. Uh, there are three examples that, uh, that needs to be explained. One is the querying supported capability list, like I mentioned, the, the root or any other node can send the cap queue query sequence number and the options. Uh, the, if the options is nil, it means that the, the, that the remote node has to send back just the list of the capability type. Next slide, please. So here, what happens is uh, this is a, so the uh, based on the list, the root uh, or the area or any other node might in turn query, send a capability type list querying capability one and capability two, and then the capability one and capability two options are sent back to the uh, to the, to the root in this case. This the, the, this is the normal case, and then the and the last example. Next slide, please. So this is where things get. Interesting. So basically what uh, the root is saying is I want to see capability one, capability two and three and four. This node supports only two and three. It doesn't support one and four. So I'm uh, in this, if the capability type list is present, it say it means that the cap one and cap four is not supported by, 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 by this node. So it has sent only capability two and capability three. So if the, this, this, this is the way in which a root can know whether all the capabilities that it, it is requesting from the 6LR or 6LN are, 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 are responded back with or not. So in this way, I can, for this example, at least I can avoid sending that uh, one, one of three, one of one of three, or two of three, or three of three side kind of bits. So this is, these are all the example uh, call flows that I have. Uh, next slide, please. Is there a next slide? Okay, no. Uh, so that's that. That's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you very much, Rawal. Do you have questions? Thank you. Okay, please review. With, with Raul, that uh, the way it's presented, if uh, someone asks for one and three, and just gets one, uh, it can time out and and retry with just asking for three. So mm. I, I see that we we can make it work. Uh, now we need to probably explain that possibly you need to retry and provide the, the timeout. Yeah, 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 yeah. That has to be explained. Yeah. yeah. The other thing that we asked Raoul that I've not seen, but maybe implicitly it's there. Um, mm -hmm. we, we said two things. We said uh, it could be the parent uh, pulling all the children. So so it's a, a multicast, but but just one hop. Be mm -hmm. the child asking the parrot, in which case it's a unicast. And then the last thing, it could be the root putting everybody in the network, uh, in which case uh, we have to propagate it down. And so, um, can we, how do we know which case we're in out of those three cases? So, uh, uh, the first two cases are, are I, I, I think, are handled by the current draft, but the last case that you mentioned, I'm not very clear so you're saying that the root essentially does a dio style trickle to all the nodes and and, and sort of queries back back the capabilities from all the nodes okay right uh, uh and if we want to to look at this flow it's it's like you know there is this capability and the, the root wants to make sure that everybody has it or something like that now you realize yeah. that if the root would really pull everybody like I just described, that could be a humongous amount of information. Yeah, yeah. Now it mm -hmm. it might be that, uh, and and the signaling that you've shown does not really say that, um, mm -hmm. but it might be that the root says, "Tell me if you don't support uh, five, option five, and mm -hmm. so if capability five or whatever." 
so so the, the idea would be to flood the graph with this and if somebody does not support capability five then uh, you know and we expect it to be the exception then he would answer you see what i mean now, yeah 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 with that obviously is the root can can find um so, so th th that that's not about option five but it may never be sure that everybody supports of option five because if somebody missed a message mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. it's a false negative so but mm -hmm. at least the mechanism seems useful for the kind of reasons we we introduced all this discussion which is uh, do we have somebody who does not support, you know, I don't know, the RFC 8138 or something? Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I don't know how much it would be used, but if you could specify those features as well, and then we can go back to the list or what, if you want to discuss exactly the, the details of what I just said, because that was really quick, but I'm sure you understood. Yeah, I understood. Uh, so I'm, I'm just thinking whether to do it with, uh, uh, I mean, so, when Root wants to query such kind of information, is it, is it, should they do it with with capabilities or this 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 control options as part of DAO or part of uh, capability query? You know, um, uh, because if we use DAO, then we we implicitly get all the other things like act mechanism and all those things. And uh, you know, uh, with root act, uh, the node will even be able to find out whether the root has actually got the message or the capability set. So 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 that is the thing that I that that is that I'm thinking right now. If we Rather want, than for for the trickle style specifically, sorry. Well, I'm sorry. You, th there is the trickle style, style, and there is the diffusion style, right? The trickle style yeah. is retry over and over, and so you, you for a long time with exponential backup. So you hope that everybody will get it, but you never have an actual acknowledgement. So mm -hmm. that's the ripple DIO style. Now, for 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 this message you mentioned trickle earlier, but initially when we discussed it one of the reasons why we wanted to have a different message compared to dio is that we wanted to use the diffusion style whereby a node would answer to his parent only when all the children have answered or he has retried and, and failed but uh, basically the, the whole idea was um, I want to make sure that all the children I'm aware of, so in storing mode, I mean, you know, your children, otherwise you may know the, the layer two peers, but that's part, I mean, it was just a discussion on the table, right? But what we said at that time is for this message, we could use the diffusion style. Mm -hmm. The diffusion style, like I said, is when you only acknowledge uh, to your parent when all your children acknowledged. So, so the question fl is flooded. And then when all your children acknowledges, you respond to your parent. And when all your peers have acknowledged to your parent, then the, your parent answers to your grandparent, etc. When the root gets all his children or all his first operators acknowledging, that means that he is get the full set of information. That's the way EIGRP works with the dual algorithm, because in general, the, the diffusion algorithm. Um, and so the reason we did not do it in repo originally is we never sure that everybody is there listening, getting the message, etc. So we, we, we based the, the, the routing on the fact that messages are lost and, and it's because we retry them over and over that eventually they get there. Um, for the capability, uh, if we want something more reliable, obviously it means a lot more costly because the parrot will have to retry to individual children. And so that's, that was one of the motivation for separating mm -hmm. Saying we should do diffusion, right? But the idea was to consider it. Yeah. So, so Pascal, uh, I I think I need to think more about this. But that, uh, but, but basically, root querying individual nodes is is what is possible already currently. But if if, if, if trickle yeah, if trickle style has to be introduced, it it has implications on the flash also. So it a uh, trickle timer. Talking you, the root unicasting to somebody down the deal. It was more like the root broadcasting the question and the parents make it making it so that it's a reliable multicast over one hop. One way to, to I mean, we have to, to describe how that would work, but the whole idea is recursively it's a reliable multicast at every hop as we go down the tray. If we got parent tree or something. Um, it's not 100% clear in, even in my mind, right? I mean, I can see how diffusion works, uh, how it can work in an LLN is, is a lot less clear. But I was not saying go unicast. I understand we can do that. My, my prime was to do a reliable multicast. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I'm not saying we should do it. If we realize we cannot, or it's too costly, etc. But the the case okay, at least the, yeah, let's take, wanted to hmm. know if somebody in the network does not support this option. That's that's part of the questions that the root would have. Okay, so the primary aim of this, the primary use case is that if somehow root wants to ask in the network, is there anyone who doesn't support this capability? Let me know. That is right. the point, right? So okay, that yeah, that that, that use case uh, is is. He may is also really that's that's the more sensitive sensible, but the network is not too big. You may also ask. Um, I want to know the amount of memory that every node in the network has for installing routes. So that okay, would be yeah. the of messages, but if the network is 40 nodes, then that, that's doable, I expect. Yeah, but in this case, if the, this kind of information is sought by the root, then isn't it better to actually unicast and get this information? Because otherwise, uh, uh, okay, you're saying if, if we can try to check if there is any uh, improved way of doing it through reliable multicast. If there is, then we might think sh we, we should think about that. Okay. The, the, the question, you know, the cost will be the same going back up, right? So to the host will still send that information back to root. But the cost of asking mm. would be a mm. lot less. Less, yeah. Okay. So, so mm. you have yeah. questions, right? Let, let's yes, chat. Yes. Yes, but sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pascal, are, are you assuming that the root already has a list of all the nodes, so it knows if it got a complete answer when it got a complete answer? Well, the root has. I'm, I'm saying, are you assuming that all the DAOs have been received, et cetera, is what I mean. So you start doing that? Yeah. Uh, I was not assuming anything. I mean, you're, you're further than I was. Uh, I was expecting the, the basically the recursive operation to be done by parents down to children. So it might be that the parent is aware of the child and the root is not yet aware, in which case we would receive more information that we expect. But I, I I see that as okay. Okay, uh, I just uh, most most I was thinking that whether the root how the root would know when he's done. Okay, so so that that is the first point I was the first thing I was talking about. If you if you say I want everybody to answer, yes, as you said, you could compare the list of answers with the list of. Uh, nodes you're aware of and maybe go unicast to the others. Right. Okay. That's so, we discussed that a while ago and I think that I agree is a good idea. Now the, the other case is when you say if anybody does not support this feature, tell me. In that case, uh the positive will be positive, but that might be false and negative. Like you don't get an answer, but there's this guy who does not support the answer the function and did not hear the broadcast. Right. So so th there's still this so, so it really depends on how much we are willing to pay for having a reliable multicast versus traditional trickle, say. The problem with trickle as well is you, you don't have a real idea of how long it's going to take. Because you, you exponentially back off and, and after the fifth or seventh back off, then maybe the guy gets the question and finally answers. But that's way after, you know, the, as you said, the, 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 the root will time out and think he's got all the responses at some point. With, with trickle, you can't really do that. If you have a reliable multicast and, and you place bounds in, in the time to ask the question recursively and, and get the answer, then you, you can also bound the total time to, to get the answers. So, so, so it's, it's all those things on the table. Like we can't over design this thing, but now what are the use cases and is trickle good enough? Probably not. Well, I don't want to, to disrupt the whole meeting for this, but it's, it's, it's kind of core to, to, do, to this draft, I guess. Okay, uh, thank you, Pascal. I think I think there, there is something to think about, a lot of things to think about. So uh, that, that, that's pretty much it from my side. Uh, okay, thank you very much, Raul and Pascal. Uh, okay, for user of Triple Info, uh, was pulled in July version 31. We have been updated to be aligned with Anna Werley. Now we have version 40. 
we have in this have the change log from 31 to 40. Uh, basically, we update 6550. We advertise external roads uh, with no stream of signaling. We have eliminated hop by hop uh, all the traffic coming from an external target. The XCS uh, and uh, the XCS always encapsulate to the root. So therefore, we have deleted the hop by hop, and we have fixed some needs as well. So please comment. Uh, the shape write up was updated as well. Um, we think that it's ready to return back to the ISG. Um, but anyway, comments are always welcome. And I want to thank Dominique for the extensive review yeah, that there exactly. was just enough to do. Uh, that really helped because uh, the authors have read this document and looked at it so many, many times that at the end we could not see anything anymore. And so, Dominique, uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dominique, very, very much, and everyone that have reviewed this document as well. Thank you, thank you very much. You're welcome, so, thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so there have been a lot of changes. Um, I was just looking at the change log and um, it is almost 300 lines long. Um, Albert, we just mentioned the, the, sorry, I'm interrupting. Uh, we just mentioned the executive summary. So we have something for you that you haven't seen yet. Okay, okay, no, that's good. So what I'm wondering, and, and I don't know exactly what I think we need to do with this document because it has already gone through IETF last call and ASG review and you know, all those things. Um, if we need to do that again, um, because you know, there have been a lot of changes, right? You've had the document back for about a year. Um, so it, I, I also don't know <laughs> how much benefit we are going to get from ITF review and another IAG evaluation. Uh, because, you know, honestly, uh, you guys here in the working group are the guys who know, right, what, what the content looks like and you know, all those things. And, and if anyone's going to catch something else, it's probably going to be you guys. And you already went through another year of uh, review of this document. So, uh, can I suggest uh, something, Alvaro? So, uh, so first of all, first of all, uh, the the summary comes to you. That may help you decide uh, what to do. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we have uh, uh, the unaware leaves is is no is has it left? Has have you done your write up for it? I don't know actually. No, I haven't. It's in the queue. Okay. So. Um, since most of the changes that we made to this are to synchronize it with unaware leaves, um, what my suggestion is take our 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 overview state comments and pass that with unaware leaves to what through the process. The documents are not going to advance on their own anyway; they refer to each other. Yep. So whatever review unaware leaves get, you could do that or is is one th one thought and the other half of that thought is well you could pass that summary to the people that did the reviews before right and uh yeah i've done things like that before uh usually it's you know one revision later or something um right not eight but uh still uh yes yes i i I'd rather not have to run everything again yeah, you know, because it's this complicated document and there's a bunch of cases and, you know, et cetera. So, yes, I, I'd rather, um, and that's a really good suggestion, I'd rather just go and say these are the changes. Does anyone have any real concerns? If anyone does, then, you know, we probably have to at least do another um, IAG evaluation or something or, or, you know, something like that. Um, but as you said, you know, this shouldn't delay the whole thing because they should progress together anyways. Yes, I completely agree with the words that you pronounced earlier. Um, the, the bottom line is uh, we changed two things in all those versions. The, the summary of the summary is we added the support for unaware leave, just like uh, Michael just said. And that's basically one page of text, which is kind of standalone about what we call external destinations. Uh, 
So this is the piece that you could focus on if you want to, to uh, have so to get some help outside of the working group. Uh, just review that we didn't do something silly on that particular page. Um, the, the rest is fixing those N use cases, these N cases that went through the group, then went through the ISG. And there were bugs that nobody at the first round of the group, nobody through the ASG found. And as we did those reviews and reviews and reviews again, then here and there, there was kind of a typo mode, if you like, because there was one spirit and sometimes there was one mistake. And like I said, going a second time through the ASG, do we expect they will extract more of those typos? I would say no. Um, it would waste a lot of their time because like you said, it's an awful document, so, so many cases, but at the same time, that it was fixing bugs, right? So, so we, we looked at what we did when we do these changes, we fixed the bugs. And, you know, when you do a bug fix, you try not to introduce a new bug or something. I mean, like exponentially less bugs in there. Um, so so the, the also, uh, also exponentially, exponentially less chances that anybody at the ISG was not really aware of, of those flaws would catch anything. So, High level thing where you know the thought process should be concentrated is this this page which discusses with external destinations and and which really was introduced for the support of repo and awareness. Okay. So do you guys think that uh, I was just looking at uh, and I think you're right. I mean I don't think anyone else is going to go find anything else. Uh, I was just looking at the you know who had done reviews and you know things like that. Um, I noticed that. Um, um, the IoT director didn't do a review for this. Um, it might be good if we ask for one now, you know, by the time I get to when our leaves, uh, they'll be done with the review just in case they, they have something. Um, that way I can, when I go to the ASG, I can say, here's the summary. We got another review from the IoT directorate and we should just keep going. Um, so if you think 40, or, or I'll wait for the you know, guys to send me the summary and I'll, I'll get a review from the IoT director just in case, uh, which might even follow one of you guys here in the working group. And um, we'll just go from there. Great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Okay. Additional comments? Thank you. Hey, Dominique, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so we have uh, as well the rest of the active internet draw. We have the projection that has a new version. Uh, we have to check if the, this new version uh, close all the open tickets that they have. I see the open tickets are still open in the GitHub. This is uh, that. Then these modifications want to be discussed today by churches and PDAO is in the queue. And our main priority we have asked for review and we are going to get to one review of a volunteer at the end of July. So after that, we can move forward. And the extension, we have assigned a shepherd. So after the shepherd the, make the review, we are going to submit to the ISG. Uh, Reaper observation is in progress. And then there's uh, an aware link uh, and the uh, of uh, the 138 are submitted to the ISG. Next slide. And the related in, in related intro draft. Uh, Lighting the, the information is going to be presented for Pascal today. And the, this modification use case is related with the, this modification, I think. was an idea to uh, merge with the, this modification, this one. Then, uh, the story root act was present in the previous of the meetings, so I think it's still work in progress. Do you have some comments on it, Raul? Yeah, so uh, uh, I will update the draft based on some of the modifications uh, in another leaves draft, uh, and uh, and then the, the, then we, uh, I think we'll have another discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, 
Okay, this is our open ticket. Yes, uh, this is the you know, the this system, so you can see the ODB Ripple tickets are created here based on the last uh, comment from um, Alvaro. Then we have two tickets from the projection, but those are in the GitHub. Well, next slide, please. So we have some issues in the capability draft, um, some uh, issues to the triple observations. Like this. And in DAO projection. Yeah. So I think this uh, needs a uh, fix version 0 too for enrollment priority. So I think we can close that issue. And then for our projection, we have those issues that we have to check if the version 10 address those issues. Um, the next slide, please. Okay, Georges, uh, thank you for sending the slides. And now the slides are into the system. I uploaded successfully. So, Please, if you can share them. Thank you, Inas. Do you hear me, guys? Yes, I can. We can hear you. We can hear you. So, do you want me to advance the slide, or do you want to share them from your own desk? Feel free to advance the slides, please. Okay. It's all mine, actually. Oops, oops, sorry. Oh yeah, so it's not yeah, it's not in the accumulated slides. Okay, let me get the other one. One second, coming up. Okay. Erin, can you see the slide? Yeah, we can see it. Yes, I think. Make it bigger. Is that good? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, I think. Yeah, it's good. Um, do you have the floor? So, um, here I have Dominic. Yeah. yeah, slide two. Slide one. Can you go to slide one, please? Oh, do you want to go back? Okay. One slide, just one slide. Yes. So here I have. I will. I will try to cover two different two two drafts that are uh, related to each other. So the one is uh, the recent one that I worked on the use cases, and I'd like to have your feedback about the future of this draft, whether I should continue working on it or whether there is interest or not from the uh, working group. And the second one is about the solution, one of the solutions that we may have with the VIS modification draft. I will give you a brief overview for over both of these drafts, and then I would like to initiate a discussion at the end of this presentation with, uh, with the working group. Next slide, please. So I'm not sure to what uh, if I need to go again through the details because I gave it uh, in, in in the end of April the uh, the presentation of the use cases. So I will try to be brief here. So basically, we have so far four use cases. So the first two are the node joining uh, to do, do, to Dodak. An example, typical example here is uh, a smart meter that is being replaced in the field while a Ripple network is operating in a stable 
mode. So this node will send the uh, either will wait for a long time for the DIO uh, control packet to be received, or it will initiate by itself the DIS in order to trigger the DIO control packets. And as a result, we will have a bunch of DIOs from all its neighbors, and the trickle tunnel will be resetted, and this will increase the traffic load in the network, and as a consequence, we'll have the uh, energy consumption in the network. The next uh, use case that it comes from, uh, both of the first two that comes from the modification draft, it's, it's about identifying the defunct DODAC. So basically, the Sorry. <laughs> so basically, the idea here is that a Ripple node may remove a neighbor from its parent set for a DODAC for a number of reasons. For example, the neighbor is no longer reachable or the neighbor ad advertises an infinite rank in the DODAC. But the problem is that a Ripple node may fail to remove a neighbor. For instance, the node may fail to receive the, neighbor, the neighbor's DIO advertising and increase rank or neighbor's membership in a different DODAC. So thus, a node will continue to consider itself attached to a DODAC, even if its parents in the DODAC are unreachable or have moved to different DODAC. So this is the use case. And such DODAC, which is characterized defunct from the node perspective. Now, the problem here is that if, if, if the node will continue maintaining the state about a large number of the defunct DODACs, it may consume considerable part of the total memory in the node. So the potential idea here will be like, we will send DIS message, and inside this DIS message, it will include the flag, non-inconsistency flag, in order to prevent the trickle timer to be, uh, to be resetted, and it will include some solid state information options to identify the DODAC questions. For instance, the flags I and D for the Ripple instance and the DODAC ID in order to find the appropriate DODAC. Then we have uh, the, the use case that comes from the Ripple observation from the Raul's draft, which by the way, I saw that Raul that uh, solved this issue from, uh, from, from the draft from the observation draft, so it's, it will be uh, addressed here now. So the idea here is that to reduce the control traffic overhead, Ripple uses the uh, trickle timer to update configuration parameters. However, in the absence of regular traffic, the adjacencies uh, cannot be tested and repaired if broken. So we do have the uh, Ripple Unicast DIS to query a node for its DIO where a node receiving this uh, Unicast DIS must respond with Unicast uh, DIO with configuration option. And now the question here comes if this mechanism could be as well uh, made use for probing the adjacencies. And then finally, we have the fourth uh, use case, which I need to update the draft with the 01 version. So this, this use case comes from Pascal, from the, our uh, latest uh, uh, meeting so where the idea is okay we have a sh sudden power shutdown in the in the network and what will happen is that when the the nodes will uh, reboot all of them all of the devices would like to uh, discover the, the network they will start sending all of them directly uh, DIS packets here and there and will be a little bit chaotic so we may have some um, we may need some solutions in order to mitigate the problem with the multiple DIS packets and the collision that we may have and additional retransmissions and so on. So these are the, so far, four use cases. So the question to the working group is, if you have more use cases in your mind, please uh, let us know. Uh, uh, Dominique, can, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, so here I'm, here it comes the DIS modification draft. And it comes with several uh, enhancements, let's say. And here I give a, a brief overview. So we have uh, somehow a solution to, uh, to reduce the number of 
DIO responses on DIS request by uh, adding uh, some flags, for instance, the N and T flag, where N stands for no inconsistency and T stands for type. So with N, basically, uh, the node will uh, inform the receivers, do not reset your uh, trickle timer. And with N, it will uh, identify uh, with uh, to the uh, receivers whether the DIOs that they will send in response will be in broadcast or in unicast. Then if, they, if we want to reduce even more the number of responses, DIO responses, there is a what's called selectivity of multicast DIS messages. Basically, what uh, the draft proposes is to have a meter container inside the DIS where the node will somehow filter the nodes that will respond to this DIS based on different uh, routing constraints. Then we have uh, the third point here, what we, it's called the information carried by the DIOs. Basically, this is related to the uh, second use case that I talked before about the identifying the defunct DODAC. Basically, inside the DIS, we could have some information, uh, solicited information about the root or the prefix uh, information or about the DODAC and so on if we want to find the problematic uh, DODAC. And finally, uh, the fourth point here is the response spreading, where uh, we some, somehow try, we try to randomize the response of the DIOs when we are sending a DIS request. So basically what the problem here is that when a node sends a DIS request to its neighbors, if two or more nodes will reply with DIO control packets, we may have collisions. So by uh, having this response spreading, we will randomize the response time. And like this, we will avoid to have collisions, which in turn uh, makes it to have retransmissions if we have collisions in the DIO responses, okay? So these are the uh, a summary of the DIS uh, modification draft. Next slide, please. I have two examples. So here is the uh, the example of whether to reset or not. So on the left side, we have the default use case where F node sends the DIS in broadcast all neighborhood nodes will reset their trickle timers and will start sending DIO packets in short intervals, so which will increase the, uh, the traffic. On the right side, we have, again, F sends the DIS, including the flux, and the flux, for instance, if it is N, the nodes will reply with DIO, but will not reset. So it will just will, will be one shot of uh, DIO uh, response and it can be unicast if we have the T flag included in this DIS. Uh, next slide, please. Now, if we want to uh, even more optimize the number of nodes that will respond on this DIS uh, control packet, we may include, as I said earlier, the meter container option where if some of the devices will fulfill the specified routing constraints, less nodes will reply. So for instance, in this case, only node A and R will respond to F. So we are reducing by half the number of DIO packets in the network. So the traffic, which translates into energy. Next slide, please. So in this slide, we have a theoretical uh, count of DIO packets in response on DIS uh, control packet as a function of the number of neighbors receiving. So basically in the X axis, uh, we have total number of neighbors. And on the Y axis is the uh, total number of DIO responses. So as you can see, with the default version of Ripple, which is the gray color, the, uh, the more we have uh, neighbors, 
the traffic, the control packets, we may get can go above 1,000 uh, control packets. DIS, uh, DIS request. And then if we include, for instance, the end flag, which basically says do not reset your trigger timer, we already reducing essentially uh, the, uh, the number of DIO responses. And then if we include on top of that the NC metric container option, which will uh, force to filter out some of the neighbors, and depending on this filtering, you can see that we are having a varying uh, number of responses, which is always below uh, or equal to N flag. Next slide, please. So here I have a series of, 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 of slides where I'm showing some uh, detailed uh, depiction of behavior with different uh, flag, uh, with different flag, uh, with different flags configuration, and with some uh, meta container options or response spreading options. So basically, we did uh, uh, a small uh, setup, small uh, network of ten nodes where we had uh, node 6 that was joining into this uh, network. So we did this on Contiki NG, and we were running Ripple on top and 60s minimal uh, at the layer 2. Next slide, please. So this is what happens when we do not have any flag, any option. So basically, we have the default of 6550. Node 6 uh, will join around uh, time equal 30. So basically, the the red line means that uh, the radio is off, and then green line indicates that radio is on, and uh, node 6 will send the DIS, hello guys, I want to join, please somebody send me a DIO in order to get this uh, necessary information so that I will join this Ripple network. And as you can see, all the neighbors, they are resetting their uh, their uh, the uh, trickle timer, trickle timer, and we are having multiple of uh, DIO packets in response from all these neighbors. Next slide, please. So when we including N flag, so basically what we have is uh, only one node. All the trickle timer is not resetted, so each device will send only once the DIO in response. So we already reduce this uh, repetition of DIOs. Next, next slide, next slide, please. So if we include the N flag plus the response spreading in the bottom uh, subplot, you will see that the good thing here is that we don't have any more collisions, or there is very really low chance to have uh, collisions because the nodes now will respond with uh, a variable timer, and around two milliseconds. So what happens is that we avoid the collisions and by avoiding collisions, we avoid the retransmissions. So this is the response spreading uh, functionality here. Next slide, please. So we have N flag response spreading and the metric container where the third uh, item here basically filters out the uh, the nodes that will uh, fulfill the uh, the constraint that is specified inside the DIS. And as you can see here, when node 6 sends the DIS, only three or four nodes respond with DIO, which is sent only once. And it is they are sent in different times because of the, because of the resp response spreading. Next, next slide, please. So here we have the two flags, the uh, no inconsistency and the type flag. So basically, we add one more line in the legend. So we have the uh, unicast DIO PX. So basically, what you see is that at around time 30 again, the node 6 sends the DIS, but because we it sends the N empty flags together, it will receive only unicast DIO in response. And these are the green cross packets that you see in this timeline. Uh, next slide, please.
So the interesting part here is again, if you combine N plus T plus metro container with filtering out some of the nodes, we will receive only four nodes that will respond to the DIS uh, uh, request. Uh, next slide, please. And so here we have the <laughs> ultimate, we have uh, no inconsistency, unicast in the response, metric container to filter out and response spreading so that the nodes will send, will not send at the same time, so to avoid the collisions in response. And in the bottom figure, you can see that the four devices that they are transmitting, they are, they are having some time difference, differentiation. So we are avoiding the collision in response, as well as we're reducing the number of responses in terms of the IO. Next slide, please. So this is uh, a summary of different flags and different combinations of between flags and options. So basically what you can see here, we are reducing up to more than 40% the number of DIO responses when we are including some uh, flags and options inside the DIS request when we compare to the default RPL, which is a great Ripple, the, the, gray, the gray line in the, in the bottom. Next slide, please. So this is the slide where I would like to initiate the discussion. So uh, from my side, my next to do is to include the use case that was given by Pascal, uh, so that I will have the zero one with all four use cases. Question to the working room will be, do you have more use cases in mind? And the second question will be, is there any interest on this draft? Like, should I continue dedicating some energy on this, uh, on this, on this draft? Uh, and then the next question will be about the future of this draft of the use cases and the DIS notification, whether you want, whether you want, or you think it should be too different drafts or, or whether the use cases should be in the appendix of the solution draft. And then the last question will be about the solution draft. Well, I'm having background noise. From my side? Uh, yeah, anyways, I have a question, so I unmuted. Uh, are you still getting a background noise? Is it okay? No, no it's better. Uh, okay. My last word, and then I'm open for the debate sure. <laughs> discussion. Uh, so the last part will be uh, whether it will be okay to continue with the IS modification draft, or you want to have one single solution with uh, because I know that the lighting the IO information has some 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 options for the IS as well. So whether you want to have one single draft or to separate in this subject, that's all from my side, and I will be happy to have nice discussion. Thank you. Okay, since I was mentioned, can I have some questions here? Yes, please. So, so George, just please. have a debate. <laughs> uh, debate question, right? I mean, uh, we are only people, so it's hard not to be mentioned here, Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The, the the first thing is when we include these metrics, uh, it's basically a filter. Uh, we will have less answers, but we might. Be missing the right answer, right? So, so the drawings seem to indicate like, oh, by magic, the the, the best parent and the guy on the left would answer. Uh, since we don't, I mean, unless the metric is a rank and we say, uh, but answer if your rank is better than this. But since we don't know where to start, I mean, it's very hard to do something like that. Actually, what? that's one of the ideas, by the way, to to have a filter on the rank. Yeah, yeah, but but you need to know where to start. So you need to have also to have heard something. So it's chicken and egg, otherwise. Yeah, um, it it doesn't matter that much. You're saving so much that you're better off uh, being too selective, receiving nothing, and then lowering the the threshold. Well, so I'm I'm fine just having two or three uh, DIS being sent before you get the answers, as opposed to creating an avalanche of responses. Say, say you say, for instance, the metric is, I'm not here for, but we need to, uh, need to expect magic from this thing, right? Uh, so just I'm saying, for instance, if the metric is, you need the signal must be better than this. 
uh, you might get only the responses for guys who are even farther than you are uh, from the root, just because they are the one closest to you. So um, we have to be careful. Just saying, there is, yes, we have less answer, but we might be missing the right answer. Or the filter is wrong, then we might not have any answer at all. For instance, based on rank, if you don't have any idea what to, what the right rank is to start with, then if you ask for which is too low and too far, then everybody will answer. The filter will be useless. If you ask for something too high, too near the root, then there will be nobody because you're far from there. So, so it's very hard to know what to start with. So it's a chicken and egg. So, so I was just that's just you know food for thought. I'm not saying I have an answer for that. I'm just saying hey, it's not easy. Um, so, so that's that's point one. Point two was about uh, the use case four, which is where um, the node sends um, the, the node reboots, but but say it's a blackout, and and you are we are talking about your electrical meter, and so so now after the blackout, the power comes back, and all the meters boot, and guess what? At pretty much the same time, they would send this message. And obviously, it's not something you want for the reasons George just has explained, like. They will collision with one another, or making a cacophony where nobody answers any understands anything, and even worse, that will actually use the spectrum that could be used for the IO to reform the, the network. I mean, so, oh, frankly, uh, I would agree definitely with you. This is the hardest use case, right? I mean, we have nothing in the network, and we everybody starts at the same time. I do not say that I have a solution in mind for this, right? But it's a place to start. The, 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 the blackout is a use case we have in the AMI net networks, right? I mean, it's, it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah, all of them are real, right? Uh, so, so, my bottom line is, and it's true for the answers as well, when you, you have this, this uh, delayed response, uh, trickle is exactly meant for this, right? It's a matter of defining what we call redundancy, what we call the same thing. For instance, if I send, I, 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 I reboot, and they want to send a disk. Yes. If if I trickle that, and I consider that any disk that I would receive, which would have the same flags as mine, would be the same as mine, that I would basically cancel out my own transmission because I got a disk from somebody else. Um, and so so using is basically explaining and saying what what a disk is, which is the same as yours, and allowing trickle to cancel them, cancel your own sending. That could probably help a lot. Uh, in the same fashion, if the some answers, some DIOs are the result of a this answer. And for instance, we have a bit in the DIO which says, I'm an answer to a this. Then somebody would also answer a this. But you know, everything is is trickled in, in Ripple. So so the, the DIOs themselves are trickled, even if you if you put your trickle value back to the minimum, um, still it's trickled, meaning that if anyone answers for the same question, you should not have to answer. But we, we need to, to explain that this is actually a duplication and that it's, it's, it makes it unnecessary for you to answer. What I'm saying is basically trickle does very naturally this delayed answer, at least some of it. And um, I'm not saying we don't need the flags and no, all, right? I'm saying, hey, we need to, to look at exactly what trickle does, how we can use it, and um, is it enough or not? So can I just state a few points uh, as a response to Pascal? The reason why we have the delayed thread option is precisely in the case where we request a unicast answer, because if it's uh, the multicast answer, it will be trickled. So we do not need to have this uh, spreading added on top of trickle. But if you request a unicast, uh, then it will be sent immediately, quote unquote, and that's why we have the, the spreading option. Yes, it has uh, to be. For that case. Yes, the, the, and, the, yeah, agreed. We, we discussed that actually. And, and the, the bottom line was, if I remember well, that because it's unicast, we cannot expect that the other guys see the response and consider it's a duplication from their own response or something. Um, and, and so the idea was, if we have a layer violation of some form, we could actually help. But... Right. And and the other stuff is, when you say trickle will do the job, then you will eventually get to the area. The, the point is that if you have a quiet network that has a very long maximum period for trickle, then it sets the 
the expectation for the time you have to wait before you join the network. And, and so there are some cases where the technician is not going to wait for that expectation of time. So that's why we want to send the DIS as opposed to just waiting to get the, the DIO through trickle. Yes, but th then, then we have two choices, right? We said when we early discussed that, we said there could be a button on, on the meter or something. And you press it, that would force the DS or something. So, so that, that was one yeah. option we had. Uh, the, the, the question I, I have was, um, could, we, could we trick what we, we have so, so we don't even need that button, right? A button is additional complexity for, for the guy who installs the meter, for uh, the, the guys who make the meters, they have to install this button of the logic when you press the button, etc. I was wondering. Right, they need, that... but they need a button anyway because they need to associate that meter with uh, person X on that street in that city. So this is going to happen anyway. Okay, so maybe in the case of the meter, I was just trying to think. You know, um, if Trickle could not only decide that you don't have to send the message, but also that you should not even reset the bit, the, 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 the email or something. So, I, you know, you, you receive this, this as, as we receive it today. So today, this multicast one. So, so today we would reset to email and everybody would do that. But now there is somebody who will fire the DIO first. And because of, say, you know, there are this K number of DIOs which are fired during this short window of time. The others, also reset, did reset their trickle uh, timer to in, so they will do in time two or something. But I was like, oh, could we say, oh, go back to, to where you were. Don't don't stay with the small I mean, You had your chance. So just, you know, the, the bottom line would be to play the trickle with the short duration just once and then resume the normal duration. Yeah, which is, yeah, yeah, pretty much the same functionality as saying send the response once with delay spreading and, and don't change your trickle timer. That's exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. Give it a chance mm -hmm. and, and then go back to where you were with the trickle timer. Yeah, but, but the, the, the period. To give it a chance, you still need to, to cancel if enough response were perceived, right? So so that's so, so just play him in once and restore or it's not exactly the same wording as, as saying response one. And anyway, uh, not all in, uh, not all networks do uh, do transmission cancellation. They play the period, but not necessarily the cancellation. So you don't know that's going to happen anyway. I'm not following you on this. What do you mean? Sorry, was that a question? Uh, yeah, I was not following you on this one. You say you're not all. I'm, I'm saying trickle has two components, two elements to it. One is uh, playing the, the period at which you try sending the DIO. And the other thing is uh, canceling out the transmission if you've heard enough uh, consistent information in the okay, first constant. half of the period, but but the second constant uh, is that the k value? I think uh, the k could be set to zero if I remember correctly, which means uh, I will transmit anyway. Uh, and so you don't know that a given network does have uh, transmission cancellation. Well, if one mechanism we introduce assumes it, then we'll say you can just use it if you have a k of k that's set, right? So, so I understand that what you're saying. I'm, uh, I'm not clear that anybody says k to zero, but as they say they do. Well, what, what's the default it's value in quantity, Georges? You know. Right? Without K, without K, you basically are back to the exponential back off, um, slightly randomized. So in my understanding was that what most implementation would do by default. So, so, so um, let me just state in the context in which I had the same issue. 
uh, and my configuration, uh, uh, you know, and I think this is the configuration of Quantique as well. Uh, the, um, so, so my uh, the I min was set to twelve, which means uh, send uh, uh, the initial DR after four seconds. I mean, four seconds, uh, uh, roughly four seconds between two and four seconds, and then the disk is configured to be sent randomly between uh, zero to four seconds. Now. If my node density is sufficiently high, like like uh, I have a root, and then there are like at least ten or twelve neighbor, uh, neighbors to the root, and this neighbor starts sending this all the time, and my I mean is four four seconds, then there is a good chance that the root might keep resetting the DIO timer trickle timer, and won't send the DIO ever. Uh, so this the, so so I'm assuming. The proposition here will solve that issue. Is that uh, is that assumption correct? I mean, uh, I know for sure that we had a discussion before and it, it targeted this uh, scenario. So my I mean is twelve. By default, the I mean as per RFC sixty five fifty is two fifty six millisecond. With two fifty six millisecond, it's very difficult to get this problem. But if I increase the I mean to four seconds and keep the default disk timer to four, uh, I mean zero to four seconds, in which case I, I, I have this problem. With sufficiently higher, uh, with higher node density, I want to keep an I mean which is slightly bigger in size. So, so, so uh, that's when I face this problem. I have a question of how so, so the I mean is, is larger than the DS, and so so you, you time out the disk and you retry it before you get any DIO. That's the problem. Yeah, so uh, so 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 the the problem is before the DIO trickle timer can start, someone is sending keep someone will keep sending this, and there is no way the root will know not to reset its DIO trickle timer. So so at least for the first time, at least for the first uh, first uh, till the first DIO is sent. The the root should not be resetting its trickle timer. Uh, if there is some way of saying that, that would be great. Oh, I mean, yeah, that would I... solve the problem. Jen. Oh yes, I remember the discussion. Now I'm sorry. To... Mm -hmm. It looked like a bug to me, right? Yeah, we we had talked about this on the mailing list. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I remember I was even on the mic on that point. That was long ago, but mm -hmm. yes, I remember you you mentioning it. I was like, you know, once you re there is a difference between resetting the value of i to i min, and so if your timer is bigger than that, then you have to to restart your timer to i min. Or uh, once you're already there, if you receive a new disk. Rearming the timer, which you should not be doing. For me, that that was a bug, and because the timer, once it's the value of I mean has been set, uh, the value of of trickle timer set to I mean, whatever you receive, this one should should keep on going until it times out, uh, because otherwise it will be longer. It will be pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed each time you get a message and you never get to answer. Like that that's what you describe. And I think so, it's so, more of a bug fix than anything else, right? Okay, so if 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 if, if essentially what we say is that we won't be re re restarting the I, if the timer is already at I mean, then even if we receive if if we receive a disk, there won't be any 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 handling done for that disk. Right. Exactly. Or there there won't be any trick, a timer handling being done for that particular disk. Uh, maybe some other handling can be done. Uh, right. If that is the way, then That's I think that the, then. Yeah, then, then then doesn't it solve all the other issues as well? Is there any so then the sudden power shutdown issue is it still there? Is what my question is. Yeah, if every because the prime prime is everybody sends a disk at the same time, and nobody considers that the disk sent by the neighbors is a duplicate of the disk that they would like to send. So if everybody wants to send a multicast disk, I mean they should be sensitive to the fact that all those other uh, matters are rebooting next to them also trickling sending this. So if four meters around me sent a disk multicast, I would expect that that will be the IOs and I don't need to send a disk multicast. Uh, but, but that is a... This use case, it came at, at, at last, right? I mean, the solution that I presented did not consider the your use case, right? So 
please do not relate to, to please do not <laughs> relate that the solution that I presented solves the uh, your sol your use case as well, right? I agree, and that's why I was adding this discussion. I mean, exactly. see exactly. how far so takes yes. us, uh, and exactly. I mean, whatever we can describe, even if it means the same thing, like like uh, Dominic said, if we can describe it in the way we handle trigger, then we are still very close to the normal behavior of the protocol. So it's, it's it looks like natural to do it. Mm -hmm. So my case was, it seems natural to cancel all those deaths. Asking for multicast, uh, it looks natural to consider that your neighbor is doing the same thing is duplicate, and so you can sell your own. And I'm back to okay, should I then do i equal times two, or do I do I go back to i max or something? Right, which is even for the DS. If I if I want to send a DS and I see people around me sending DS, isn't it enough that they did? And so. They did. Should I really send one after I two? I mean, useless probably. We we need to think a little bit more about that. At I guess. Yeah, I think uh, Pascal, Giorgio, myself, maybe whoever is interested, we should have a little design session on on that. Uh, is, well, that's so few. So few people in this interim meeting, it's nearly the design session in itself. <laughs> yeah. So one, one more question in the context, and I'm just curious to know what is the what is the metric container that was used for filtering in this uh, in the experiments, uh, uh, the data presented yeah, in the slides? The... Sorry, what? Uh, in, in the simulation, in my idea was the to simulation? use the rank, as uh, Pascal suggested rank. in the simulation. Uh, 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 George, can you confirm? It was the rank. The it, 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 it was the rank, yes. It was the rank. Okay. Okay. So basically, you 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 send a constraint saying that only the nodes having rank less than or equal to this rank send back a DIR. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. And if you do that, the question is, what rank value do you give? Mm -hmm. Which mm -hmm. uh, for these simulations we put arbitrary value, but the question is valid. Yes. It's, I do not know yet which value to put there. So if you get at least one DIO, you could use that as reference and say everybody better than that, the rest I don't need to know. Um, but if you did not get any DIO at all, then you have no idea of what range of rank is being used in this graph, unless you're just rebooting and maybe you're a meta or never change position or anything, um, then, then that would be valid when you reboot to actually pick if you could store the last value. Pick that. Yeah, yeah, we can start with a sh 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 uh, short value, and then if we don't receive anything, we can increase the next one, etc. Yeah, but uh, you end up sending even more this than then you save. So. Yeah, what uh, Pascal is saying is to maybe store the last known uh, value if you are just rebooting. Right. Yes, of your own rank. So if you knew yeah. what your own rank was, yeah. you could start with that next time. But you need to have run with. Perfect. But even if you know nothing and do a log search, you know, so probably cost less to the overall network but, um, than uh, having this uh, avalanche of TIOs in case of high density. Yeah, if everybody it only costs to you. Well, it costs bandwidth, which is the shared medium, during w which would be used to send DIO if you were not bothering people. You know, right, but you never know when you get to the IU. It may be tomorrow. Chicken and egg, right? But but that's when trickle is very, very efficient because if we could basically say, okay, let's let's send this DIO, for instance, the multicast DIO. Um, but uh, if there is anybody else sending the same DIO, then it's being cancelled because the two of them are useless. But, but anyway, I'm not saying yes, it's, not mean not the it's just that it's hard to tune. Uh, we have to find use it right but it shouldn't be a reason for not introducing the mechanism sorry i mean i mean even if it's hard to tune it doesn't mean we don't want to introduce the feature 
in the protocol. I was not saying that. I was saying, let's understand okay. exactly Just what, sure. what and, and uh, put all the best ideas on the table on how to use it, right? Mm -hmm. For instance, we, we already get a use case, like I reboot, I know my uh, old rank. Let me try with that first. Uh, that's already a case where you have a static value and using rank makes sense. So the other question in the context was uh, whether to keep these two drafts are different or same. Uh, I mean, as far as I can see, most of the most of the dis discussion in both the drafts are related to this. And uh, so, so I'm, I'm so wondering, is there any reason? Is, so I, I would uh, basically, is there any reason to keep it different? I mean, I, I, I can clearly see that uh, most of the discussion is uh, it's very similar. So I, what I'm trying to say is. You mean Use case okay. and the solution, or the yeah, yeah. Use use case and this modification. Use case and this modification. Right. So basically, everything related to this goes into the same draft. Right. So my my opinion on that, and I was I want to ask George just to write this uh, use case draft was to draw attention from the working group to the use cases so that we discuss use cases first, and then we discuss solutions. And so because we had a hard time. Drawing attention, I thought okay. the separate okay. draft for the use case would draw attention. I think now we have the attention of all the people who care in the world working group. <laughs> yes, that's true. That, I think it serves the purpose. There's another thing that that uh, it is the fact that, and we know that depending on the use case, the situation we're in. And sometimes we need maybe this button on, on the meter or something to, to know which situation we're in. But depending on the situation we're in, th there is one mechanism we want to use and one that we certainly don't want to use. Uh, for instance, broadcasting this when there is this blackout coming out and everybody broadcasting this is, is a bad idea. So um, the use case is also interesting in that it not only says what the situation you want to solve, but also what kind of this you want to send. And if you if we start saying if you are in this situation, you send this this, then it's more than a use case draft. It's, it's actually a specification. And so that's when you want to merge because not only do we say you have this bit, you have this bit, but we all start sending here as a use case for use this value for the bit. Right. So, and I agree. Now that we got attention from people to the use cases, we think we have listed them all. Then it, my inclination would be to include the use cases as an appendix in the solution draft. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, the third, the third choice that is not written here is put it in the main draft. If it's not only describing the use case, but also mandating a setting of the bits in that case. So you mean mm -hmm. appendix is too much informational? You want when you say in the main draft, you mean in the, in the core of the draft? If you end up saying in that situation, you must set the bit blah to this value, and you must set the bit blah to this value, then it's not an appendix, right? Um, yeah, but we're specifying a protocol. You can't specify what the technician in the field has to do when he has to press a button and buy a sandwich and drink a Coke. I would not drink a Coke. <laughs> so, I mean, Oops, this meeting is being recorded. I need to pay attention. <laughs> yeah, the, the bottom line is, uh, Either we make it so that whatever is done, it's not too bad. And that includes what I mentioned about, you know, sending the disk and applying trickle to the disk of your neighbor so you don't send the same. So this would make, you know, my situation less harmful, mostly harmless. But if we don't mm -hmm. have solutions like that, and there are ways of using bits which can really harm, we also must specify not to set the bits in that situation. And that becomes standard track. And that's when I say, if you, we start having this discussion, then it's not an appendix. But we need to describe the situation where you must not set those bits, basically, in that level. So, so the use cases helped a lot sorting out the various situations and compiling them.
obviously when you send say must or must not you also need to describe something more uh, uh more generic than uh, a technician with a blue uh coat and a bird uh, pressing a red button, not a yellow, you know, that, that would be crazy. But but we need to describe like the, 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 the global situation, like one meter versus the whole network. <laughs> right, but that could be, you know, recommendations, common sense. I don't see it as a part of a protocol specification. When to use it? Well, I have had that discussion recently about some security uh, settings and stuff like that. But it was more like, well, no, and I was moved to different. And there was even shoots about how to deploy the thing. And then I would say, hey, okay. no, we are specifying a protocol, not the deployment of that protocol. But yes, actually, we have, if, the, if there is a chance that somebody does something wrong, we need to write it. And even uppercase. Okay. To be honest, I'm, 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 it's not 100% clear whether it's going to appendix or the main of the solution draft. Uh, because if it's going to the main of the solution draft, I'm not saying that I'm against. The thing is that the protocol proposes something, but if we are proposing during the uh, use cases sections some recommendation, I mean, is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it okay like this, or we want all the recommendation and the actions to be in one part of the, of, the, of the draft and the use cases to be just use cases in another section? And if the use case is, is there to illustrate a generic case, then it can be an appendix, but we still have to, to work the generic case in which the recommending setting of the bits is this. Okay. Right, if, 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 if there is a, a chance that the network fully reboots, then you should be doing this, for instance. Um, the this could be a setting of trickle, could be whatever. Uh, and then you could say in the appendix, there is uh, appendix A4, which actually gives you an example of such a case where the whole network reboot, and that example is my smart grid after a black hole. Okay. I mean, the must cannot apply to the specific case of a smart grid, right? The must applies to situation when there is a global reboot of the network. Right? People will say, oh, an IoT network never has a global reboot because people will you know, put the battery in one. And yes, but if you have a smart grid network, yes, you have a global reboot. It happens. Okay, I will, I will, I will, uh, I will uh, merge. Well, use cases then if you want. Yes. Yes, it's a good. I think. It's then the question is merged into which, <laughs> because now we have the question at the bottom of the slide, which is uh, uh, where do we put the the modifications to this? Right now, there are some modifications in the lighting DIO draft and some others in the disk modification draft. So how do we do? Do we merge those two as a big one? Which has the lighting DIO and all the modifications to this, or do we keep them separate? The modifications to this of of eliding DIO into a separate one, so it's better contained and make sure they are they synchronized, of course. Um, any opinion on that? Yeah, I have I one. But... You will come later, right? It's less advanced than the this modification. So pushing stuff, um, taking stuff off eliding, putting it to modification. Uh, if it's possible, that would work, and then leave eliding its own life just about the eliding mechanism. Well, we would still need a reference because you have the RCSS stuff in in and the flags in the disk that we want to get in somehow. So they would be tied. I don't see how our CSS is tied with this uh, this this discussion. Uh, Adam. I'm not sure if it is tied. Is it tied? I, mean, I believe it's. Well, right now uh, in eliding the IO, the proposal is to use a byte when that was reserved in this to take the RCSS that to last further. So that it it filters out the well. It yeah, but the use case of RCSS is 
uh, but, but the use case of RCSS is, 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 is not different, right? It's, uh, but here, uh, what we're talking about uh, for DIO, this is a single hop, uh, single hop uh, request response or single hop uh, uh, reduction of control overhead with RCSS. It's, 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 I mean, what I'm trying to figure out is it's still uh, the disk modifications that we're talking about may not. Uh, may, RCSS may not directly be related to that. But it's still a modification to this, right? Uh, it's so there. There is a modification to this. Oh, you're saying that right? like that. Okay, yeah. The, the, the this message is getting updated. That's right. Uh, but uh, I, I, I mean, I mean, rational wise or use cases wise, uh, maybe maybe that has uh, no relevance there. I feel. Right. I mean, uh, we can, I, I, so we, I guess I can. Uh, I need to reread the specs, but I, I guess we can uh, bring the the DIO uh, eliding DIO modifications in the disk separately. Uh, otherwise, we could we could very well bring most of the draft into this modification to the point that it's merged into it, and that would be too much. Right. Okay. We should start going forward because we are like only 50 minutes. Uh, would be, of course, nice to merge those documents, but at the same time, if uh, we have to work in the use cases now, we can just focus on the use cases and then we can merge later. So, uh, um, we can, we should take those topics to the mailing list and let the people know. And please, if you organize a meeting, just let us know so if we. We can contribute. Yeah, well, I'm late on that. I should have done that two weeks ago already. No problem. So. No problem. Uh, yeah, but yeah, thank you very much for this work. And yes, uh, of course, they have, I think that the, this modification of the use case have to be merged. And, uh, but uh, since uh, we have to focus on the use case now, we can move forward that separately. One more match. Sorry. Um, but we need to move forward with the LIO DIO information. Pascal, it's related. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. Okay, do you see the slides? Yes, I can see. So, um, there are 15 minutes and there are 15 slides, so we are good. Um, no, actually, it's, it's, it's a joke. Uh, uh, most of the slides are repeating the ones from last, from last time, and they are there for background, but I only have three slides, so we should be quite okay. I'm getting background noise, and I wonder where it's coming from. Like a ch -ch -ch. Maybe it's I think this is Paul, but you just muted, so this should be good. Is it good now? No, I'm still getting it. Okay, oh, sorry. That's, that's interesting. It might even be my PC, I don't know. Uh, it's just bothering. So, anyway, so please, next slide. Okay, so. Uh, I published in March, but uh, the, the change, changes are, are very minor. Um, same problem as I was mentioning earlier, we, we've, we've had a lot of, of work on a number of documents, like those four and DAO, we all uh, turn on and, and user 3.4. And now we're past. Uh, we discussed about doing Ripple V2. And so, um, the question to the group is to have this, this uh, consistent and, and uh, overall view of, of where we want to go with Ripple V2. And if you remember, the, 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 in my view, and at least the, the main difference between Ripple and Ripple V2 is that Ripple was designed for, I would say, one use case um, with a fixed configuration. You have it for all times and it will never change. And, and uh, the network lives exactly like that for its life. And now we're saying, hey, uh, Ripple is actually successful. Uh, there will be a brown field. 
there will be upgrades, there will be changes in the configuration, and then we can't bring down the network and do a flag day every time something changes. It's not acceptable in the use cases where actually Ripple was deployed. So we need to think Ripple V2 in a way that will allow to uh, improve the network operation, uh, add features, add capabilities, while the network is, is deployed, active, and even very large, possibly. And we will not be able to afford having to bring down the whole network and restore it. So this is the reason why we've got the capabilities. And this is also the reason why we have this draft, because this draft is all about making sure that uh, the configuration information, not just the configuration option, but all uh, that we could call the configuration information that a node needs to have to operate Ripple correctly. All this configuration is up to date. Meaning, okay, I might have read the configuration earlier, but maybe what I know is obsolete. I need to know that it's obsolete. I need to get the new operator, the new configuration, and I need to, to adapt to that. So that's really what this draft is about, knowing that something has changed in the network configuration and being able to adapt to it. And then adapting might be having to go from the status of router to the status of leaf, or uh, even having to, to leave the network because I cannot operate with my very old software in, in this network anymore. So I believe this, this draft, uh, not the way I wrote it, but capability that I tried to introduce with this draft is something that uh, we need as part of, of Ripple V2. Because the configuration will change over time. Next slide, please. Okay, so for now, uh, I mostly got one uh, big review and, and actually great questions in, in that review from Raul. And so if I type in your name, Raul, I typed the S twice. Um, so uh, basically, Raul kind of uh, asked about the, the mechanism that we have with this RCSS. So the RCSS is a sequence counter, right? It's there to basically give uh, a, a, a numerical value to a database which has all the possible information, that means a num which is actually split in a number of options in repo. But the, all those options, there are five of them, they are all dealing with configuration database. We are giving a sequence to this global configuration. And uh, so far so good, that's kind of simple. You know you have the latest configuration or not. And if you don't, you ask. That's why we have these, these things. But, um, where the complexity comes is I try to make it so that you could get a compressed value, a compressed content of a certain option if it has not changed. Like before RCSS going from five to six, uh, say the ripple configuration option has not changed, then it would be possible to, to just send it and say, here is the, the, the RCSS where it was last changed, and if you have this RCSS, you're okay. That's the sort of thing. So, so this AOO is an option of options. It's an option which is like four bytes, which says, uh, I'm, I'm an AOO, I'm the AOO for option, for instance, ripple capability or prefix information or any of those. And here is the RCSS where it was last changed. And so uh, this way, the node needs to maintain the database of for each option, which is the RCSS where it was last changed. And that enables to, to basically make the DIOs much uh, smaller. Because instead of having this problem of sending something in multiple DIOs, as we discussed earlier, here for, for every option that has not changed, we can just set, set the four bytes which abbreviated. It really means same thing as last time with this RCSS. <clears throat> Now, that really means that, okay, we save on DIO, but we have more code complexity because now we need, need to remember the RCSS for each option. Um, and that's kind of the thing I understand how will that, that you said, hey, that's overly complex. Obviously, if we don't do that, which means we increment the RCSS of each option each time the RCSS is incremented. Uh, so considering all the options, not as separate uh, fifths of the configuration, but, but the, all the options together are the configuration, then 
That means that each time you send, you upgrade your CSS, you need to resend the full content of all the options. Like you need to dump your full link state database, if you like. And, well, it's a choice. M bigger DIOs versus more code. And that's where we are. Now, if you decide to, to upgrade everything with the RCSS, it's possible. The draft allows for that, but the thing is, um, we would need probably a capability to live in a brown field where some nodes want that and some don't. Because if, if for instance, most of the nodes uh, support, but one node does not, uh, for that node, each time the RCSS is incremented, we need to resend everything. But for the other nodes, we can send the abbreviated versions of things which have not changed. The parent needs to know, and that's a capability gain. So we basically have three choices here. Either we say, A, uh, we, we get rid of the AO altogether, and the RCSS is for the whole configuration for everybody. Or we enforce that everybody supports the AO, like in, in the objective function, in the, the MOPEX, we say it's a MOPEX with AO. Or third, we, we enable a brown field where some nodes would do AO and some nodes would not, but then we need a capability. And that's pretty much my big question to the group. Next slide, please. So, so that's that's like I said. The oh, I'm getting you. You get muted and then muted and remuted, and I don't hear you, but I get noise. So if you try to speak, I would not hear you. But I saw that your mic went unmuted. Uh, yes, yes. I wanted to say something. Uh, is it a good time, or do we have some more right slides? So I thought that's the last slide. Okay, that's, uh, the last slide. that's the time. Well, questions are. Can Can you go back to this last slide? Uh, so, so, so. Actually, I prefer option three here. The reason being, so, so you've mentioned that all the options must be sent when RCSS increments. The RCSS will increment only when either of the option actually changes. And if you see prefix information or configuration option or any of those options are sort of, sort of, uh, you know, they, they rarely change. In my, uh, so, so, so what I'm trying to say is even if they change and if the whole, whole set has to be sent again, it's, it's still as compared to the overall control overhead, it's, it's, it's still a minute overhead, uh, uh, you know, it's still it's still a very less uh, overhead. Now, when it comes to complexity, if you see when it comes to complexity, maintaining an RCSS in context for every such configuration option is 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 a big. It's quite a quite a quite a quite a big deal. Now, you have mentioned third option, which is which is having capability to indicate that. Now, what I'm uh, what I feel is that eventually having the capability. It, it 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 does not you know it 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 actually further complicates the specification. It yeah. does not. Um, yeah, you got my point, right? So, and one more thing is one more thing is let let's say in the future at some point of time, we we see that such kind of thing is necessary because not because of the current set of options that we have, but because of some new options that gets introduced later on. I feel it can be an add-on later on if, if really we have that kind of need. This is, 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 is what I think. You know, I, I feel it. The, be the better way is to go is, is to go simple right now, which which definitely uh, handles all the current and mean future use cases and future extens extensibility is possible. So there are, there are two things, Raoul. The first one is. Um, so playing developed advocates here for a minute. First, I mean, I must ag agree that the capability game is it's it's not under control. It's, it goes too far. So it's either we do the AO or we don't do the AO. Um, the, 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 the value of the AO is that it, it saves you from sending three DIOs and maybe missing some of them and having to deal with that, which is its own complexity. Um, so, so, so because as you said, there will be one uh, option changing very rare 
and it's going to be very rare. So when there is one, there's only one. Uh, and so you can compress all the others basically. And so that means that it will always fit within uh, the IO. And uh, apart from the very beginning of the network, but the rest of the time it will fit. So, so we, we save a lot of energy and bandwidth by doing this. On every damn DIO, even if they are not so often, there are still are many of them. So you're, you, the trade-off is here, bandwidth and, ener and energy in the one hand, and having to maintain five RCSS instead of one. And usually, usually when we design repo, we tended to accept a little bit more complexity, like having five sequence counters instead of one. Um, having to sound more bytes. Yeah. So, so uh, you're just advocating for the, the river. So I want to point out that that's, that's what's happening. And so I would really, really like to, to, to consider how many times the options are sent even just because somebody, you know, asks for something. Um, Basically, how yeah, much that represents. So, so th that's my, the big question. I'm not sure that we have the real view of how often those op options would be sent and what it costs to, to not be able to abbreviate some of them. So that's for the DIO game. Now, I believe that your command only applies to DIO because there is also the DIO. The IOO also allows you to say, uh, you know, all those storing mode DAOs that I sent you, or even the non storing. Everything I sent you last time, still the same. And this saves on every DIO when they are periodic, right? So, for, for that thing, I believe you still want it, I guess. I, 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 don't, I think that you're not telling me to remove the compression of the DAO. You're just talking about the DIO. Yes. Yeah, so, so sorry for the DAO for the DAO part. Also, is it is it is it not the same uh, point? Like, uh, if the options are not getting changed, uh, for example, in most of the cases, the target option is going to remain the same, uh, as as well as the transit information option might also remain the same. Uh, so, so uh, uh, the 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 point. Uh, what I'm trying to understand is, won't a single RSCSS Work in that case as well. Yes, it's a singular Without CSS the, for all the, right. the. Yes, it's a singular CSS for all the the, the thing in the DAO, but the AOO is how you say same thing as last time with this RCSS. Everything the same. All this collection of things I sent you in the DAO last time, same. Okay. So, okay. So yeah. Same. There we make it. Yeah. Okay. We okay, still okay. need the, the uh, okay. AOO for the. DAO, right? I mean, you don't want to okay, have to okay. say on the whole list of all chart. I mean, you know, all those DAO must be in storing mode, right? Okay. Yeah, for the DAO part, uh, I get it. Uh, yeah, yeah. But the, it, it still does not mean that, uh, you know, for the DIO case, so, so AO here is identifying an RCSS for the DAO, and in case of DIO, it still can be optional to use AO altogether, right? I mean, uh, it's it's. It... Well, we can we can remove the 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 compression of the DIO and keep the compression of the DAO, right? If that's what the group wants to do, then we keep the AOO just for the DAO. Uh, we're just making sure that you never said not to compress the DAO. No, what I'm trying to say is, uh, we, we 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 can we, we can aim for DIO compression as well as DAO compression, uh, but only uh, only for the normal case. Like like uh, nine, if, if there is a change that occurs, it is okay to go with slightly more control overhead, given that the complexity is uh, significantly reduced uh, in case of DIO at least, because DIO processing is 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 pretty comp. Uh, I mean, is 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 getting very complex uh, as an as it is already. AO here will also require the information. So these the, 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 the RCSS in context to every configuration option has to be maintained in a database. It, it has to be persistent. You cannot afford to lose it and things like that, you know, on, on reset again. Uh, so I, I'm wondering all those implications will also be there, right? If you lose, you know, basically the idea is 
um, whether you store the option in uh, persistent storage, in which case we would you would have to keep the RCSS for it, for each option. Whereas if you don't keep the option in persistent storage, then you lose the option A on the associated RCSS together. And that means you don't have it and you start like from scratch. Starting from scratch is okay, right? So, so I, I, I don't see that there is a persistent okay. storage game here. Uh, either everything is in persistent storage or nothing. That's the bottom line. The, the, the option, the, the difference is you have one RCSS, five different values for five different options, or you have the same value for all the options. And if you have five different values for the five options, then you can, you can elide. When you ask unicast for uh, some options, you can elide the others. Whereas if you don't have one RCSS per option, you need to, risk to ask all the bits of all the options, which might become several of these messages. And you're saying that's not much in the air versus complex. And they have trouble seeing that. Because I, there are a lot of DIOs going on. And so I agree. No, yeah, 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 Pascal, there is no denying that, that, that there are a lot of DIOs going in the air. But how many DIOs are going in the air when something changes, right? I mean, once the things have changed and everything com comes back to normal, we get the, the given compression. Yeah, but imagine, for instance, you don't have person storage. Imagine you reboot. And there is a reason why the whole network reboots or something. And then everything will have to be passed again. Uh, that has to be done anyways, right? Because RCSS, if, 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 if persistent storage is not there, then... Yes. Yeah, agreed. It's more like if you lose, well... I, I'm not convinced in either fashion, right? You seem to be convinced and you're, you're further than I am because I'm not convinced. E either way, right? My intuition was it's always better to save bandwidth than, than five counters. And now you come back to me and saying maintaining five counters instead of one is a lot more complex. I did not see that coming, to be honest. Okay. Uh, because for me, one counter or five counters is just like a few bytes. Um, and I'm not it's saying it's not the size of them; it's the it's the update frequency. And yes, how, yes, and it's the update frequency. How, and how often you have to get them to flash, and uh, what's the effect of of failing to get them to flash? Oh. Right. So, oh. so with five five count, if if you have to erase and rewrite a flash block, right? It's the same the, counter. It's five value because you keep the value of that counter for every option. But the oh, same okay. thing goes up for whichever the change on whichever the option, right? It's just that. Good, good, good clarification, whichever. but but I think what we're trying to say is that it's the rate at which we have to erase flash blocks. And if you have to erase a flash block, then everything in that flash block can be updated. So so it actually doesn't. So so fewer. It's not how many counters we have or how many values we have. It's the frequency of updates that that and the, the effect of failing to update before you crashing before you update is the issue as well the rcss is updated at the same rate in both cases right because it's each time there is one change in any of the options because there is only one rcss that covers the whole thing the question is whether you remember the rcss of the last change of a given option which means that you maintain five values and they're stored with the option. So when you go to flash, if you write the option in flash, then you write the RCSS for it in flash as well. And the same block. So, so I don't see that as, as representing any difference unless that makes your block bigger or of a sudden you don't stay in one page or something. But otherwise, I don't see the difference. Then again, maybe we need to be very clear on the mechanism. The mechanism is there are five options today. If you change any of them, RCSS goes up, bang, by one. But it is the, 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 so each option has the last change RCSS associated to it. This option was changed for RCSS 5, and this option was changed for RCSS 6. Now, if, if the RCSS bumps to 7, for instance, and you were at 5, you would like to know what change is changed between 5 and 7. So you know your last change RCSS. And so you could you could do set of this and say the last I know is five, and so all you all you need to get is the others, right? 
So what the disk would contain is uh, the one that changed for six and for seven, and the other one would be just the abbreviated versions saying, oh, it's not that we don't sell it, it's just that it's still with the same old value of five. And so, so, so that's what it's used for. But in terms of storage, it, you just have to store it where you store the option. If it's if not in flash, you can if you, know, if you accept to lose everything like the, the configuration, you can lose the SCSS for it as well. Just place it at the same place. You don't need to, to put it in person storage. You only put the SCSS in person storage if, if you put the option in person storage. So I'm still I'm still confused basically. What I'm saying is I did not find an argument that, that was convincing either way. So I'd like to see one. My intuition was different from the one from Raoul, so that's very interesting. But but I didn't see a way to be convinced either way. I'm not so, 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 my intuition, I'm not convinced with Raoul's intuition either. So Pascal, it is possible to theoretically analyze how much of cost savings we can get, assuming an update frequency of X uh, for all these five, configura five configuration options. Now, even if we assume that Either of this five configuration option gets updated once per week, which is which is which is not possible. You know, once per week is too frequent an update for for such kind of configuration. So, it is possible to theoretically analyze how much of control over its savings we can get, and and I'm pretty sure that we will we will it will be a fraction of uh, fractional savings, not uh, not a major savings. So that that, that that's where you know uh, it was going. Yeah. Yeah, but but the complexity in code is just maintaining maintaining five values of the, the counters versus just one. Uh, but there's there's a single counter. It's just what's the latest value of our this option at which it was changed. And I've not seen that it's so overly complex. So so I can buy that it's not a lot of value. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I have yeah. trouble yeah. finding that it's very hard to code. Yeah, sure. So 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 uh, at, at the least, uh, what you're uh, suggesting is if 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 we keep the AO, we will keep it completely decoupled. We will have still have an option of having only RCSS or a configuration option uh, or an RCSS per configuration option, right? So if that is the case, then it's it's, it's okay, I guess. Then uh, as an implementer, I have an option to choose uh, to use either of it, right? No, what I'm trying to say is, okay, uh, can, can I say again? Uh, what I'm trying to say is, as an implementer, I want an option to use just the RCSS for the whole configuration option, single RCSS. When you mean uh, the whole configuration, that this, all the set of all the options that are about configuration, all five. Yes, yes, yes. There is an RCSS for all five, right? There is a single counter that's yeah, 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 yeah. that you keep the same value for all, or you don't. Yeah, yeah. So, so eventually, I don't want uh, the AO AO to be mandated. I, I, I guess it's not already mandated, but uh, AO to be mandated to be used in case of DIO at least for individual management of individual configuration option. It reminds me of of your own solution for the for the other thing, right? When you say, "Hey, uh, when I don't support this option, then." Um, I can send the number, but at least you know you've received everything. When you give the list of options you don't support, the list that was asked. Right? It's about the role that the AO plays, because if, for instance, you, you, you knew your old RCSS, right, and you see that the RCSS has changed, the step is to get the new values. And so you, you ask for this DIO, and the DIO will either be split in several and have all the options in full, or some of them would be replaced by AOO, which makes the DIO much smaller and avoid splitting in several messages. Um, and now you're saying, okay, I prefer I have several messages and have all the options in full than having some of the options replaced by the AOO. That's that's what you're telling me, right? Less code or something. That's why the complex. I just try to understand why the complexity is. And I realize it might be because you don't want to pass the mail uh, on top of all the other options. Is that correct? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. So 
you mentioned the case of multiple DIOs or the DIO fragmentation that can happen. Not fragmentation is not the right term. You might be, eventually there might be a reason to send multiple DIOs if we are not able to compress well. But these multiple DIOs will get sent only if there is a change in either of the configuration options, right? And if that's yeah, uh, that's true. Sure. Or yeah. when the guy has rebooted and he is asking for everything. I mean, yeah, the question yeah. is how yes. often does it not reboot and lose everything? So it needs to ask, and uh, since the multicast, uh, you know. It's okay, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the AO is mostly to avoid having those big DIOs. Um, in terms of code, it doesn't look like a lot, but if having a new option is a very bad thing for you, then I guess I can buy it. No, no, it's not about the new option. So it, it's a it, it's a new this new option plays a part for every individual configuration option. So in the in the RAM, I need to have this configuration option has this version. It, it has a direct implication on the on the RAM, right, as well as on the flash. So 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 that, 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 that's what uh, uh, instead of having two bytes for the RCSS, you will have 10 basically because there are five options. Yeah, I mean, ten bytes for the whole configuration mm. of your whole repo, right? It's not like per per peer or something. Yeah. Like I said, you might be right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I still I still need to be convinced. I've not found the the argument that says, oh, it's so complex in terms of code that that we don't want to save the energy and bandwidth. Right now, I see that the code is not very complex. That there is no uh, static RAM prime, or I don't see it. I, I still don't see the problem, but, but if the group says go with it, I mean, I'll go either way because I'm not convinced by the AO either. <laughs> I'm not convinced either way. Well, I, I would like people to, to, to basically, that's what the group is for, right? G giving advice. If the balance one direction, just that it's very unusual, but we have an opposite intuition here. So I'd like to see more comments and more people with more arguments. Anyway, we're past the hour, but and people, if if you if you could read the draft and come back to Raul and I and, and give us advice, that would be neat. And there will be okay, a, in us at some point. We need to decide if it's the work we want to have and then adopt it. Sure. I will, have a, I will have a look. I haven't read it yet. Okay, thank you very much, Pascal. Um, yeah, we are 15 minutes over time, but I think it worked the discussion. So it was nice. It's nice. Um, we are going to the last slide. We are with the, about the next meeting. Um, we we want to have in September follow what the, the mailing list state. The next uh, interim meeting uh, is will not meet in July. So the action point here will be set to do for the first two weeks of September. Uh, do you agree? Yes. Okay. Okay. So and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, because George just said you did not want in August. So. We heard you. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's perfectly fine. After vacation, yeah, it's very, very nice. Um, okay. Need to send postcards. <laughs> if I manage to go back to Greece, I will. I will do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, further question comments? Okay, we will send the link of the recording. We'll stop the recording now.